So we're back in After Effects. I have two text layers here. One says linking, the other says expressions, and we also have a, a red solid for the background. So let's take a look at how to connect two controls together. As you know, that if you ever wanted to link, say, two controls, scale and position together so that they follow one another, you'll find that, uh, you know, if you move your, your time here, you can see that expressions is actually animated, but linking is not. And if I link this to the expressions text, it's going to follow it in position. And if there was scale, it will also do the same, but opacity does not. So how do we tie those two together so that these two are pretty much copying one another? So let's go to linking. We, are, we have the opacity vi visible. Let's go to expressions and press T to show its opacity. And there's our 0 to 100 animation from before. So we need to link these two together. I'll go to the opacity property. I'll hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch, and that's going to create my expression box. So remember the four buttons that appear down here? Well, one of them is a pick whip. And this pick whip uh, works exactly like the parenting pick whip. So I'm going to grab this and drag it down into the opacity property for the expression, expressions text. And once I let go, a bunch of code is going to be added for me. And it, all, it ends with the all too familiar transform.opacity. But there's also more going on right before that. Before we take a look at what's going on there, I'm going to click away. And when I move the time, you'll see that they now both animate exactly the same. Now, keep in mind, position is being affected by this parenting here. Opacity is being affected by the expression. So if I switch this off, if I remove the parenting, you'll find the, the opacity still happens, but now it no longer follows the position. Now, I could just as well do the same with position to tie them together. But unfortunately, that's going to put the linking text on the same position as expressions and moving it upwards is just way more work than is necessary when it comes within the expression. So this is yet another case where you'd actually want to use parenting rather than trying to get an expression to tie the two positions together. As we said in the previous video, always look for a solution that does not involve expressions just so you can ease up your workflow. There's no need to stress with code when something as simple as parenting can do the same thing. So let's take a look at what's happening inside here. We have this comp dot layer, these brackets uh, in quotes, we have expressions, and then a full stop, transform, full stop, opacity. So we already know what this means, but uh, as I explained before, opacity is kind of like climbing down the tree from your composition. But in this case, we're climbing from the project panel. and. This is kind of how I like to think about it. So imagine you're the expression itself and you're sitting in the project panel and uh, someone's asking you to link to the opacity of a specific layer. So what you're going to do is say this comp and that means the composition that the layer is currently in. That is the linking layer. So this comp, which is comp one. In this comp, there's a layer called expressions. So it's going to go comp one. There's this linking text here. That's this comp. And then layer expression, that's this layer here. So let's open up that layer and see what it has. We can go to dot transform. So we're going to go to the transform section and then dot opacity. We can scroll down here and find opacity. So it's basically telling it that follow these steps to get to the specific layer that I want you to reference. And that's pretty much that. And now the two layers are linked together. So that's uh, pretty Pretty cool, isn't it? It's pretty useful, especially with the parenting thing, because I find myself parenting layers and then I want these um, and then I want the opacities to follow through. But, you know, it doesn't actually work like that. So if I come in here and uh, I'm going to quickly show you something else that you can do with the linking. Let me go to the expressions layer. I'm going to press R. And I'm going to add some rotation. So let me move this over here to the two second mark and I'm going to give it a 90 degrees of rotation. And it doesn't really matter what's happening right now. I guess I should probably do it this way. There we go. And now it rotates as it moves up. So if we parent these two together, they're going to rotate as well. And it's actually going to maintain its relative position to the expressions layer. But there's something else I want to do here. Instead of having this moving upwards, I can I, I actually want the linking text to rotate in the opposite direction of the expressions text. 
So how exactly are we going to do that? I'd like to leave this to you to try and figure out. If you did mess around in the previous uh, video, you probably already know how to do this. If not, just give it a try first. I'm going to select the linking text. I'm going to press R to show the rotation. I'm going to hold Alt and click on this box here. And that's going to bring transform.rotation just as we've seen before. And I can go to the expression text here, press R to show its rotation. And then I'm going to use the pick whip again. So let me pick like this to the rotation. It's going to say this comp.layer expression uh, transform.rotation. That's cool. Uh, let me just remove the parenting for a sec. And if we go back to the beginning and play this out, you'll see they now rotate together. And you can even see the values here are the same. Well, I want this to rotate in the opposite direction. Now, I could very easily take these keyframes and copy them over and change this to minus 90. Or I could use an expression. Well, this is in fact an expression tutorial. So let's take a look at how to do it in an expression. So I'll click in here and I'm going to take this. Uh, I've picked with this already and I'm going to type times negative one. So what's going to happen is this 90 is now going to be multiplied by minus one and that's going to make it minus 90. So everything that this layer does, this one is going to do the opposite. So let's take a look. You can see now, they're both rotating in uh, different ways. And actually, if I grab this control here, you can actually see it happening live. They now rotate in opposite directions. That's, uh, that's pretty dope. But, and um, this, this particular one is pretty useful with parented layers because there's some canceling out that happens that's pretty interesting. So if I link, if I take this linking text and I link it to the expressions text here, and I move it, you'll now see that this sort of minus 73 is canceling out with the rotation that comes with the parenting. So now we have the text actually staying upright, whereas the other one rotates. So um, let me just quickly make a scenario where we can use this to create sort of a carousel. So just give me a sec to quickly create this scene. Okay, so here's my base. I have a text that says A, I have a null object, and I have a green solid as a background. So let's probably make this black so that it's actually visible. And then I'm going to make a bunch of copies of this. So we have A, B, this can be B, this can be C, and this can be D. And then we're gonna arrange them sort of in a sort of square arrangement. So A up there, B over here, D down here and C over here. You know what? You know what would be awesome? If I actually gave this some context. So let's make this north, east, uh, west, and south. Okay, so I'm not going to worry too much about the arrangement of uh, northeast, west, and south. We just kind of want to have them uh, spaced out nicely. So let's grab these text layers here. And we're going to parent them to the null, just like that. And when I grab the null and press R, we can rotate this and you'll see that they all kind of rotate. Well, I want these to stay upright and not rotate together with the null. So we'll do the same thing. Notice that um, if I turn this to 90 degrees, uh, they're also all rotated by 90 degrees. So in order to counter this, we need to do the opposite of this. So we'll grab new N here, we'll press R, Alt click on the stopwatch, we're going to pick whip rotation down here, and then we're going to do the same minus, uh, sorry, times negative one. And that's going to achieve the same effect. There we go, now it's upright. And an, an alternative to doing this, instead of multiplying by negative one, we can also just go back to the beginning of the text and just put a minus there, and that's going to do the same thing. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens when I rotate this. You can now see the N it stays upright, uh, whereas the other layers are not. So let's right-click this, choose Copy Expression Only. We'll go to E, W, and S, and we can just click Control V, and that's going to paste our expression to all of these texts. As you can see, they are red, which means they're being affected by an expression. And now when we grab the null one, we press R, and now when we rotate this, you'll see that they, um, they kind of rotate 
they rotate with it and they all stay upright so you basically have yourself a nice compass so mess around with this get a feel for how it works see what else you can do with it um something interesting that you can work with as well is kind of figure out how the logic works so if we have this sort of fading in and we want this one to fade the opposite we can do value minus we can pick up this here and choose 100 minus and that's going to subtract this from this so now it's zero and as we go along you'll see now it's just basically like doing the opposite so one fades in the other fades out um i think this is something you can do with keyframes but uh just go ahead and try it out so that'll be some pretty decent practice for you so give that a try and in the next video we'll talk about variables mm -hmm.